came down that road yesterday in a hailstorm and uh, hitched into Frisco and now I gotta walk about three or four miles down this uh, road that parallels I-70 which is right over there and then it's back into the, the wilderness. Well, this is Interstate 70 crossing under this and uh, gonna keep heading north. So a couple miles up, the CDT is closed due to the Sugarloaf Fire. The official reroute goes through the town of Empire, but I made my own alternate route. So I'm gonna hike up to the point where the CDT is closed and drop down into Woods Creek instead, hike over to Butler Gulch and then back up to Stanley Mountain where I'll rejoin the official CDT. Well, well, look at this campsite. I know where I'm sleeping tonight. Well, that's Woods Creek down there. So I just gotta bushwhack my way through this valley down to that lake where I should pick up on a road and meet back up with the official CDT in a little bit. Well, I'm officially off trail now and I think it's the first time in Colorado. Colorado's been uh, pretty much a beaten path the whole way. The bushwhack's mostly done, and now I'm on this uh, old dirt road, which is pretty damn rough to say the least. So would you even see the toad crossing the road? Well, it's the uh, Henderson mine down there and they mine Molly Bendham, however the hell you say that. Well, I'm all done with my fire reroute back on the CDT. Well, I was about to climb up Stanley Peak, but uh, as I was sitting up at the tree line <laughs> some lightning uh, struck uh, very very close I didn't see the bolt but it was extremely loud and that was my cue to head downhill a little bit and uh, here I am just seeking shelter under one of these trees I'm just gonna wait it out there's really not much rain but I'm not gonna be up there in the thunder and lightning I'm gonna head up over Vasquez Pass there and take a shortcut. Otherwise, I gotta walk many, many miles on an exposed ridge line, and uh, it's in raining, thundering, and lightning, so don't really wanna do that. This will shave off some miles, cut off some ups and downs, but unfortunately, I'll miss some, uh, you know, some probably some pretty beautiful hiking, but 
Otherwise, I'm just gonna be sitting here waiting for the weather to clear up. I hate sitting here doing nothing, so I'd rather be moving, making progress. So I'm following uh, Vasquez Creek downhill and it's actually quite a bit greener and more lush than pretty much most other places I've been so far in Colorado. It also just rained, but you can tell this place gets a little bit more rain than maybe some of the other valleys nearby. It's a porcupine. Yeah. Hey there, Porky. Damn, look at that guy. Yeah, he doesn't have to be fast. So yesterday after dropping down low enough into the valley, I left the wilderness area, hit a dirt road, it was another hour's walk to a road in a little bit better shape. Eventually hit this gate. Beyond it lied a gauntlet of car campers like I have never seen before. Miles and miles. I don't know, 500, 800 people, 1,000? There was one group alone that was 80 strong. So the closer I got into Winter Park, the less available campsites there were. And I didn't realize it until it was too late. It was after 9 p.m., just got dark. It was all private land, and I really had no choice but to walk into Winter Park now and get a hotel. So now this morning, I've got about a four hour walk before I rejoin the CDT again. So I'm back on trail now after hiking about 11 miles of uh, road walking from Winter Park. And I'm on a trail called the Devil's Thumb Trail. And those kind of names always crack me up, you know, like Devil's Bathtub. This is where the devil bathes. All right, we are back on the CDT. There's a couple of moose up here. Please don't trample me. I've been waiting all of Colorado to see some moose. I keep hearing about everybody that sees moose, except for me. So now the trail just barely dips into the Indian Peaks wilderness for a couple of miles. This is one of those mornings you wake up and find out what things look like around you. I hiked till about 10 p.m. last night, came all the way across this lake, down from that hill, in the dark, in the rain, and came to this lake. Man, what an awesome view. Look at that. Really haven't camped on a lake at all, anything like this, this whole the whole CDT, so. This is a first. So last night when I was taking shelter from the rain at that cabin, another hiker named Smeagol showed up and we hiked the rest of the evening together. And that's kind of how it's been on the CDT, you know? Um, you bump into people, hike with them for a little bit, but at the end of the day, everybody's got their own pace and their own schedule. And for that reason, um, a lot of people don't always hike together, just kind of when it's convenient, I suppose. Bald Eagle just flew away. And there's its uh, chicks, I guess. It don't look so bald, but... So I missed a turn a while back, and I ended up taking the wrong side of the lake, so I had to backtrack a little bit, and now I'm on the correct side of the lake, so that's a start. Well, this is Lake Danby. It's a man-made lake and the third largest body of water in Colorado. Well, 
this is a really nice change of pace walking along the water like this. There hasn't been anything else like it yet on the CDT. entering Rocky Mountain National Park, so only another five miles or so to Grand Lake. Here we are along the mighty Colorado River. Welcome to Grand Lake. Time to hit the post office before it closes. Got an hour to spare. Nice.